Hey, this is John Young. Today we're going to be doing the connect, de demonstrating some connecting of wires. Uh, if you've got wires, we're going to show some different ways of doing solderless connection. Basically, anything short of pulling out a soldering iron and connecting these for low voltage applications. Now, the wire I'm going to be using is a, a cord. And it, this was just a cord off a, a tool that I cut the cord off just for this demonstration. When I'm using these connectors, I would not use these types of connectors to run a household current through. A cord like this, if it's going to be hooked into it, it needs to be wired, hardwired right into the tool with no splices. But we're talking for low voltage situations. So first off, I want to do is I want to use my little, I got my little channel lock wire stripper here, and I'm going to strip a wire so we can kind of figure out what to do. Now you'll see on this channel lock, I'm gonna show you this, there's different numbers here. These are the talking, this is talking about the gauge of the wire. 10 being the smaller number, but it's the larger gauge wire. This particular wire and most wire, you can, you'll see on the casing somewhere, it'll tell you what it is. This particular is an 18 gauge wire. So I can go down to the little gap, that's the 18 gauge and I can squeeze and it strips the wire very nicely and very easily. Uh, we'll put links in the description, by the way, for everything that we're gonna be talking about here. But we've got our little wire and this is, we're gonna, this isn't quite a braided. This is, uh, we've got, this is a copper, you know, a multi-strain copper wire. And I'm just gonna kind of twist it a little bit just to keep it contained a little bit better. Now, if I needed to connect that to this little wire, and again, this is really unscientific, but I just wanted to give you an idea. There's a few ways I could do it. One, I could go, and this is for QFUN right here with this little kit that we're looking at. This is a solderless connection. This would allow me to take, let's see, I wanna go 18 gauge is the, let's see, the red is my 18 gauge wire one. But I can get a connection, a little connector like this. And this little connector will allow me to push wire in both sides. And if you could see down the middle, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's a little piece of metal on the inside. And what happens is the two wires come together inside this little piece. They'll come together and then you will squeeze that metal and that metal will become kind of the, the holding point. As you can see, this isn't a super strong connection. And that's not really no fault uh, you know, of the tools. It's just that this is not meant for a, a, an application where there's gonna be a lot of torque put on the, the connections. If you are going to have a lot of torque on it, you need to do something where you're you're going to be using more of a soldering connection. Okay, so there we go. The one side is, is crimped in the end. The wire needs to come out the side of it. I wasn't paying attention to it that much. So the wire needs to be coming out on the left side of this tool, like so. And then it will crimp them in the middle. So now we have our connection made. And again, it's, it's, it's connected and it's there. So if I were running some extra lights for my ATV, this would be an option, especially if it's out of, if it's concealed and it's out of water. Yeah, that's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Uh, much better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it might be able to pull apart easier than that. So that's, that's how you would work. And again, with the crimping tool, you've got to have the wire on this side so that, because it crimps on this side, it crimps on the right side of it as you go, you go forward. So that's one way to connect this wire. And there's a variety of different pieces in here. There's different sizes, the larger gauge, the medium gauge, and the small gauge. There are there are little rings in here that for the different sizes, the connections for that. There is a, a piece where it's a pin and a, let me see, where you can have a connection where one side is the, the pin and the other side is the receiver of that. So you can plug that in. Or there's actually one that is a little blade and there's there's some that have a cover on it, but it's a blade and uh, connect, blade connection, but it has a cover over it also. There are some of those that have that cover so that you can make that connection and it's fairly well protected. So I've got my two wires stripped and I wanna connect these, but I wanna connect maybe just a little bit more, uh, let's say watertight for lack of a better way to describe it than what our, our solderless connection. This is kind of a cool little thing. This is a solder seal connection kit. And it has these little tubes in here, uh, different size, the different colors are for different sizes. But what these little tubes are, are heat shrink tubing that have these little red spots that will melt in to melt the heat shrink tubing to the wire casing. And in the middle, you see there's a little kind of solder ring there. That's what will give us the ability to solder these two wires together. So I'll grab another one because I threw that one on the ground. What you do is you start by sliding the two wires in there and you want to try to get those two wires into that middle in that uh, that solder area. 
So we're just going to get these two pushed in there and So they need to get into that solder area, both of them, so that way this that little area will melt into that. So they'll melt together. Okay, so they're both in there. Now, what's cool about these is that typically solder you're using a, a hot iron or something. This, we can use our little friend, the butane. You can use a, a heat gun also. And what it's going to do is it's going to, you can start to see that it's, um, it's warming up that heat shrink tube. And that heat shrink tube is doing its thing. And we're getting uh, those little those little red pieces are starting to melt a little bit. And then in that in the inside there, the middle, we're gonna get that that little piece of solder is just all of a sudden going to melt. And this could be this could be just a regular lighter. It doesn't have to be anything too truthfully, you could do this with candle. If you had a candle, you could uh, do this because we're just warming it up and it's getting that tubing to seal nicely. And now I can start to see that that center, that center uh, piece of solder is starting to melt. And we're just gonna continue to warm back and forth here so we don't burn through that heat shrink tubing. But we want that middle area right there, right in there to continue to, to melt. and get that solder to kind of flow into those two and connect those two wires. And they've got a variety of sizes. They have the white, which goes down to a 26 gauge, and then they have all the way up to a 10 gauge, which is the yellow in that little box right there. So a lot of different options. Okay, it looks like that, that the solder has melted into those two wires. So we're gonna let it sit here so that that solder can cool but it sealed up. You can see that the red is melted into the, the wire and it um, into the heat shrink tube. So it should be all watertight when we're done with that. That's one, one, one option. Another option is another little clip where you can lay two wires in that you wanna connect where the two wires are not, you don't have the ends of the wire, maybe in the middle, a little connection like this. This is something that you would occasionally use if you were going to be running a wire to a remote spot and you wanna tap that spot for electric and you don't want to cut the wire and have to splice it. You can put in your first wire, you can put in your second wire, you put them in there and you clamp and boom, you go down with that. I had to use this on an ATV where I was running electric up into for a windshield wiper and then I needed to run a light. I wanted to do a dome light and it needed to be that. So I was able to use this. I put this on, clipped it on the existing power lead and then I put my power lead going to the dome light in here and a Think about this would be the existing power lead and this would be the dome light wire and then i was able to s clamp them together and there's two little if you take a look at that you can see that there's a little bit of a gap there the two wires fit in there they kind of cut through the insulation and makes the connection between the two wires and again this kit has a variety of different sizes in that also let's get back to our wire here that we just did they soldered together and they are not going anywhere well, I pulled the end off that one, but the soldered connection is all melted together and it's very, very strong. So there's a variety of different ways that you can connect the, the copper wire. Uh, these would not work very well with a solid, a solid copper, copper that's used in house, ele household electric. This is the best for low voltage stuff. It's not meant uh, to really be used safely for high voltage, but if you were doing some, some uh, 12 volt lighting around your house, this would probably be my, my preferred option. If you're gonna be running something, some lights, say uh, adding a dome light for your ATV, using something, uh, a connection like this, would definitely be an option. I'll put links in the description so you can check all these out, but please, whenever you're working with things, make sure that there's no power to it, make sure you're doing it safely, and, uh, and taking care to make sure when you're done that there are no exposed wires or anything that could lead to shorts and or electrocution. This is John Young. Thank you for watching. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.